Hi, welcome to Classic Recaps. Today, we're about to embark on a journey through the breathtaking world of Shin Godzilla, a 2016 sci-fi film that reimagines the iconic monster for a new era. Join us as we delve into the intricacies of this groundbreaking film and stick around till the end for my overall review. The film opens in the waters of Tokyo Bay, where a leisure boat is spotted with no passengers. The Coast Guard searches the interior and discovers an odd origami and a document. Suddenly, a tremendous explosion from the seas occurs near the boat, and the underwater tunnel begins to pour what appears to be large volumes of blood. Yaguchi is Japan's Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary, and he has been informed about the incident, as have all other important government officials. No one knows what caused it, but everyone is stunned to watch the disturbing footage of the red liquids in the water. The government rapidly begins evacuating everyone in the tunnel, but loud noises can be heard from below. Civilians documenting the disaster begin to observe what appears to be a giant beast moving in the incident's sight, and Yaguchi views this footage online as well. He tries to tell the Prime Minister about the findings, but is mocked for making such a preposterous claim. The conference is immediately interrupted when a TV crew captures live footage of the creature, which astounds everyone as they stare at the horror. The beast then continues to move closer to land and into the canals, wreaking massive devastation as it destroys all the boats and bridges along the path. After continuously studying the tape, the scientists notice what appear to be legs on the monster and warn the Prime Minister that the creature may be able to travel on land. The government leaders do not believe this is likely, and advise the Prime Minister to use the news conference to reassure the public that they are safe. Before finishing his speech, the Prime Minister learns that the monster has entered the city. The streets are mayhem, and the behemoth scares everyone away with its gigantic form. When it approaches the population center, the creature's gills appear to be leaking blood, perhaps due to its inability to breathe without water. The government tries to control the monster and alerts the public, but the monster keeps destroying the city. Its huge body topples structures and creates a debris trail. The beast crawls slowly, but Tokyo's density lets it cause huge damage quickly. To avoid collateral damage, the administration considers utilizing armed forces, but is reminded to evacuate the people first. An evacuation order is issued but transporting the entire city of Tokyo in the time available is impossible. The monster continues to cause havoc throughout town, flipping over multiple cars as it crawls down important junctions. The beast scales buildings and effortlessly topples them with its massive body, killing everybody within who did not flee in time. The Tokyo governor asks the self-defense force to stop the monster after seeing its harm. The prime minister must declare an exemption to mobilize the armies, because armed forces are only allowed when another nation attacks. In this unusual event, Japan's leader orders helicopters to kill the beast and ground troops to escape. The gigantic monster breaks everything in its path and then pauses, perhaps because it couldn't breathe. The leaders don't understand why this happened, but they notice the creature acting abnormally as it raises up on its gigantic legs. The monster's fins turn red, and it grows arms, it quickly multiplies in size and roars. After evolving, the beast moves toward the metropolis and towers over most buildings. The monster can now stand up and throw trains and cars with its tail, making its motions faster. The helicopters approach the creature, but the pilots note that it appears different from the reports. They position and fire on order. The Prime Minister orders an attack when the evacuation is complete, but the soldiers immediately realize there are still people on the ground. The leader orders the helicopters to retreat to avoid civilian casualties and military disgrace. The monster sees the soldiers withdrawing and runs toward the water, back into Tokyo Bay. Once the monster retreats, government officials assess the damage, and Yaguchi feels they failed the people by not reacting faster. The military cannot locate the thing in the sea, the general says they can only prepare for the next emergence. Next time, the military will utilize tanks, artillery, and airstrikes to defeat the monster. Yaguchi is also ordered to create a task group to combat the creature. The biologist thinks the monster has numerous stages, while the others wonder where it gets its energy to power its gigantic bulk. 
only biological nuclear fission seems plausible. After reviewing the monster's data, the team confirms this theory. The creature emits radiation everywhere, putting residents at risk of radiation poisoning. The U.S. president's representative, Kayoko, asks Yaguchi to find Goro Maki, a professor who predicted the monster's coming. The professor is the owner of the yacht that disappeared at the start of the film. He was exiled from Japan for rebelling against the government owing to his hate of nuclear power. Kayoko provides Yaguchi some vital study that the professor has undertaken after giving over the professor's documents found in the pleasure craft, and he labels this monster Godzilla, which means the incarnation of God. Kayoko's report demonstrates that people dumped many radioactive materials into the ocean, causing a creature underwater to evolve. The woman also shows a massive diagram that Dr. Maki left behind, but nobody understands it. Yaguchi orders the team to investigate it promptly because it may reveal the monster's defeat. The team finds a new isotope in Godzilla's radiation, suggesting its body may include unknown materials. The monster has eight times the genetic information of humans and can self-mutate, making it the most advanced organism on Earth. Godzilla went back into the ocean after morphing because its blood cools its radiation, according to the team. They may use the monster's nuclear energy to freeze it using coagulators. Before the team can implement their preparations, they learn that the creature has returned, this time larger than before. The creature's skin is armor-like, and its tail is a massive weapon. As everyone flees, the monster destroys everything on shore. It enters residential areas, and causes more harm. Godzilla now looms over even the tallest skyscrapers and easily destroys houses with each step. The monster continues to march ahead, and the people know that Godzilla is on his way back to Tokyo. The government must act quickly before the beast reaches the capital or destroys a nuclear site, causing much more destruction. Because Yaguchi's plan is still incomplete, the Prime Minister has no alternative but to send the whole Japanese military against the monster. The army lines up the tanks in preparation for the creature. The Prime Minister authorizes all military weaponry. The first wave of attack uses helicopters with autocannons to target the giant's face. They tried heavier ammunition, but the creature was unaffected. The squadron fires many missiles at the monster, producing many explosions. The monster emerges from the fog and survives the Air Force's frantic attacks, shocking everyone. The military starts Plan B by ordering all tanks to fire at the creature's legs, causing continuous explosions. The artilleries also hit the monster's face, but it keeps marching. When it nears the bridge, the assaults slow the beast. The military launches their deadliest weapon at Godzilla, and planes drop bombs that engulf the monster. They drop bombs that explode furiously until the creature changes course. Their attacks infuriated the monster, who threw the bridge at the tanks, forcing them to flee. Concrete projectiles destroy many vehicles and topple the command tower. The military watches on helplessly as Godzilla approach into Tokyo. Japan now asks the United States for help in destroying Godzilla. Three American stealth bombers approach Tokyo, but the Japanese recognize that the explosion would do more damage than the monster. The government promptly instructs the military to deploy people underground to avoid explosions. As they don't know if the Americans can stop Godzilla, government officials must also move away. Godzilla stands in the city, glowing red from radiation. Stealth bombers drop many bombs at Godzilla, and they manage to penetrate its skin. Godzilla screams in pain as it bleeds from his wounds. The creature evolves again, converting its red light into a vivid purple. Godzilla opens its mouth as the light continues to glow brighter. Black smoke from its mouth turns into flames that quickly engulf the city, destroying everything. The monster then focuses the flames into a plasma beam that destroys a plane. The Americans drop more bombs at Godzilla, but the giant closes its mouth and shoots numerous beams from its back that destroy the bombs and the bombers. Godzilla then fires a blast at the city, destroying everything in its path including the Prime Minister's helicopter. The laser knocks down a lot of buildings and sets fire to the city. After spending all its energy, Godzilla shuts down and hibernates as it sits in the rubble of the city. After the attack, Yaguchi returns to the new headquarters to find the Japanese government in disarray after losing the Prime Minister and many officials. 
he still believes he can stop the monster in hibernation. The government quickly appoints a new prime minister, but no one wants to lead during this disaster. Fortunately, most of Yaguchi's team survived the Tokyo attack, and the man begs everyone to do everything they can to save Japan from further destruction. The team begins gathering various coagulants from various companies and obtaining DNA samples from Godzilla. The US government demands the team's collaboration, and they discovered from the monster's blood samples that it can reproduce asexually and spread worldwide. American scientists immediately report this to their government, resulting in the decision to use a thermal nuclear bomb to kill the creature. The UN approved this extreme measure because Godzilla could threaten North America if left alive. Since the UN must give Tokyo time to evacuate, Yaguchi thinks they can save Tokyo by freezing the monster. The team works quickly because they need a lot of clogging agents and a way to deliver them, but their biggest problem is understanding Dr. Maki's diagram. After staring at the origami, they realize it is three-dimensional and requires folding. Godzilla used water and oxygen to create an isotope that powered it, not nuclear waste. As a water-to-energy converter, the monster is humanity's greatest threat and salvation. The coagulants may not work in the creature, and they need to know the monster's molecular structure to adjust their solution. The team deciphers the monster's unique traits and makes the necessary changes to their plan by combining quantum computers from other nations. Kayoko also stayed and gave the team many US drones and weapons. The Japanese government plans to capture and save the monster the day before the nuclear strike. They send trains armed with explosives towards Godzilla, which explodes upon contact, rousing the massive creature from its slumber. Godzilla is attacked by a swarm of drones, which drop bombs on him one by one, forcing him to expend energy by shooting lasers. The attack destroys nearby buildings and countless drones, but the monster eventually runs low on nuclear energy. Plasmas turn into flames, and attacks lose their potency quickly. The team detonates the buildings around the creature to topple them on top of the giant. The monster's internal temperature drops dramatically as it runs out of energy after being knocked down by falling objects. After more buildings fall on it, soldiers move in to administer the blood-freezing agents. The army injects coagulants into its mouth, but only after 20% of the required amount is done, Godzilla regains consciousness. Godzilla opens his mouth and fires a plasma beam at the trucks, killing everyone in the explosion. The monster tries to escape, but more trains crash into the giant beast, causing explosions that knock it back down. More trucks surround the monster and inject coagulants again, but this time they finish. The creature awakens again and destroys the vehicles while standing. It glows purple while fleeing. Godzilla roars one last time and its skin, like the rest of its body, begins to freeze. Godzilla finally comes to a halt as the core temperature approaches minus 200 degrees. The people are stunned by their success. The scientist also finds that Godzilla's isotope has a 20-day lifespan, allowing the citizens to return home quickly. The prime minister and temporary government have resigned, allowing younger generations to lead Japan's future. Yaguchi believes that sharing all the data with the nations will benefit humanity. The people didn't realize that Godzilla was evolving before it was frozen, trying to become the creatures that won this battle as it realized humanity's power. This film reimagines the king of the monsters for a new generation. Shin Godzilla updates the narrative with contemporary themes, exploring the complexities of modern society and politics as Japan faces an unprecedented crisis. From its captivating cinematography to its masterful storytelling, Shin Godzilla stands as a testament to the enduring appeal of the Godzilla franchise and the potential for reinvention within this storied universe. This is one of my favorite Godzilla films, and I rate it 4 out of 5 stars. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. Do subscribe for more reviews like this. Please help us out by hitting the like button. Drop a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movies. See you in the next one.